going to use this pyramid tool just to mark the end of the bead. Come in there and turn that bead. Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop, Mike Peace Wood Turning. Man, I love making awls. They're, they're just great projects. Um, they're great gifts for a wood turner or anybody with a toolbox. And heck, if they don't have a toolbox, you know, make them a little different shape handle and make them a nice pick. Uh, this is a redo in an earlier video. Uh, one of my first ones and one of my most popular ones, but I think it was a little bit long and people lost interest before it's over. So I want to shorten this up and make it a little bit, uh, a little bit crisper. Let's get started. Okay, you can use most any kind of uh, fairly dry wood. Um, mark centers, and we're going to put between centers. Turn it round and put a uh, chuck tenon on one end. When I say any kind of wood, I mean I've made them. I just, like I say, I love making these. I've made them all out of every kind of wood you can imagine. Cherry and maple, laminated walnut and uh, Osage orange. and and a gray and it just goes on and on and on you want a piece about two and a quarter two inches uh, square and about four inches long you can make them a little little thinner if you're going to make an ice pick that's a longer narrower handle you know there's all kinds of awls out there there's scratch awls leather awls ice picks okay so we're going to start off using a spindle roughing gouge turn this thing between centers Eight millimeter beading and parting tool. Now, I didn't tell you what kind of wood we're using today. It's mystery wood. It's some type of uh, pallet sticker. I think it's uh, Red Heart, but I wouldn't swear to it. Somebody gave it to me. You can turn this whole project between centers. Uh, if you did that, if you don't have a chuck, if you did that, I'd go ahead and drill the hole for your uh, shaft. To help it run true all right first thing we're going to do is mark this for a ferrule now what's a ferrule you ask ferrule is simply just a a little round piece of metal that goes on the tip to reinforce the wood you can make them out of all kinds of uh, items like you've got here that you can probably find something around this shop piece of copper piece of brass uh, plumbing fixture or something uh, i'm going to use one from a inner ring of a bearing uh, because that uh, this does very, I think it's got a very elegant look. Uh, you don't have to measure these things. Uh, although this is not quite running true, I probably need to face this off first, but we're just going to use the tenon to act, the, the ferrule to actually mark it. And you want to leave it about a sixteenth of an inch proud so the wood comes out the end. And I'm just going to use that spindle gouge to uh, kind of true this uh, the front up just a little bit. Now, while I'm thinking about it, we're going to drill a hole later. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, put just a little chamfer, just a tiny little starter hole, make it a little easier to find a center. I'm going to use a quarter-inch parting tool to kind of take this down a little bit, get it close in the general vicinity. I'm quick to point out that uh, my way is not the only way. It may or may not be the best way, but it's a way that works for me after uh, a lot of research and some experience. But if you got some comments, I welcome them. All right, I just want to get some rough idea. I'm not going to bother to mark that. I'm just going to do a trial fit. By just taking down the end and chamfer it just a little bit and do successive approximation. I like to put this uh, ferrule on there and glue it before we finish the rest of the shape. I could take this off the lathe to do it. If I did, I would just unscrew the chuck, but you know, this will work just fine. So I put this epoxy on here. Y'all know how to glue, glue things. Okay, if you get a little glue on the edge, don't worry about it. We're gonna cut this back. Uh, a little glue here, we're gonna take this down. Let's go ahead and let this dry, and then we'll come on back and do the next step. While we're waiting for glue to dry, let's go ahead and uh, plan the, the next step. Uh, this is a, a shape that, that I, I like to use a lot, so we're gonna, I'm just going to eyeball that. Uh, this is about a half an inch, and that will get us to here where we're going to have a bit of a bead. And, and then we're going to come back about an inch, and then the rest of it is going to be about 
about an inch. Uh, the exact uh, dimensions aren't critical. If you're new to turning these, I suggest take some scraps of wood and practice turning a couple of shapes to see what you what what's comfortable in the hand. I like the one that that fits in my palm like like this. But I've got smaller ones uh, like the one that I show here that I use to put in templates on the uh, when I'm cutting my bowl blanks. It's just a lot smaller. Okay, I think I've just about given this five minute epoxy. I think I've given it enough time to dry at least to move on to the next step. So what I want to do is I want to turn a bead here on the end about an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to use an eighth of an inch parting tool. And I want to stop it just proud of the uh, the ferrule. Uh, it it makes it uh, makes it a, a nice handle, fits well, and, and gives you something to hold on to. But as well, uh, I'll show you later another advantage when we reverse chuck it. Now that gives us something for our eye to track when we start cutting down from this line and start shaping it. So we're going to use a 3 8 inch spindle gouge and we're going to cut the end off. We're really cutting par a partial cove. Scoop up. That's how we make a cove. Let's go ahead and get the end off here. All right, now, that's where we're going to make a bead. I could just uh, use a detail gouge. I'll do that. Just to bring over that part of the bead. Okay, now, to guide our eye in the other direction, the end, I'm going to go ahead and put a parting cut, not very deep. But again, gives us something for our eye to track as we start uh, shape, shaping this. And we're going to start rounding it over now. Very tough wood. Rather coarse and chippy. Now, depending on your preferences, we could put a uh, burn... A little burn ring on there. I'm going to do that. I've got this going about 2100 get up a little friction I'm going to lean this across and just drop the handle Give it a little friction When I see it burning I'm going to stop now We're going to go ahead and do a little sanding to clean clean this up just a little bit And then we'll start parting off the bottom Before we do that though, we got to, we need to go ahead and drill that hole. So let's go ahead and drill that hole so I'm going to drill a hole one and a quarter inch deep, and I'm going to use the drill bit that matches the uh, size shaft I'm going to use. Uh, sometimes we get lucky and we can just tap that in without any uh, additional glue. If it's a little too snug, you can always go up 164th. So we're going to uh, set the speed at about 1,000. I'm going to let it just find, its, find the center. Go very, very slow so I get a nice true hole. Then we're going to clear the chips regularly. Okay, now we got that drilled. Okay, I said we're going to cut that tip uh, back to a sixteenth of an inch. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're just, again, here's the bevel. Come straight in. Okay, now we're going to get ready to part this off. Before we do, let's take this down just a little bit with a spindle gouge. So I've got it down, speed down to about a thousand. We're just going to come in and finish parting it off. Now, it's not real pretty, but we're going to clean up the back. Let me show you how we're going to do that. So we're simply going to get a piece of masking tape and wrap this. We're going to keep it nice and even 
right up against that bead. Come around a couple of times. Tear it off. We're going to fit this just inside using the inner inner ring, not a real strong hole, but it'll work for this. And this is where the bead comes in because that will support flush up against the jaws. And that's where that, that will get its uh, hole strength. You could do this even if it had the shaft on it. And that's running fairly true. So now we're just going to smooth off the, the back side. Get the speed up a little bit. And just easy ride that bevel. Now I'm going to sand this up a little, little bit, and then we're going to, I'm going to show you how we're going to texture it to give it get that little extra, extra pop. Now, once you finish off the back, uh, you can put a little finish on it and be done. I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity, though, to texture it. I'm going to use this Wagner tool. Uh, you can get more details on using the Wagner tool and other texturing tools. Uh, I'll show a link to that video. So here's a close-up of that. I like it a lot. Now we're going to use a little bit of uh, metallic wax to just kind of pretty it up a little bit. So I'm going to simply use a little bit of metallic wax. And I'm going to rub it between my fingers until I can see my fingerprints. Very important. I just want to highlight this. I don't want to get it down inside. So let's keep working it, working it, working it. And then just lightly, lightly apply this. And that looks good. Now we're going to clean up the excess wax by just using using any kind of solvent but i'm going to use a little with renaissance wax anything with some solvent in it will do but this renaissance wax will work good and now i can just bring this right up to the edge and it'll clean up any excess all right the shafts we're going to we're going to make out of uh springs uh car high carbon spring steel it's a tool quality steel you can get these at hobby shops i'll also have a uh, uh you can also get it from my amazon store um, the model number is Precision Metals, uh, K&S Precision Metals, stock number 508. My preferred size is 5 seconds. You might like uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch, uh, your, your preference. You're going to cut these off about 4 inches. Hacksaw will skate off of this, so you need to use either a uh, angle grinder with a metal cutting uh, wheel or use a Dremel with a cutoff cut off tool as shown in this picture. Like I say, I make these about four inches long. Uh, other people have made them out of drill bits. The only challenge with a drill bit is you're going to have to bury the flute. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have this showing. And that drill bits are normally too small. You want this thing to be about four inches long. So you're going to have to pay extra for a long drill bit. So this is definitely the cheapest in the long run. You get these in pieces. They're about seven rods to a pack. So you'll get a lifetime supply. But uh, your cost per per all is almost nothing. And uh, trust me, you're going to have fun with these. So you're going to make a lot of them. All right, so mix up a little epoxy, put it around your shaft, maybe uh, uh, touch your shaft on your grinder a little bit to give give it some uh, texture for it to hear. I believe this is going to be snug enough. I can just tap this in. Oh, yeah. And no glue is needed. So now all we got to do is uh, put a tip on it. I think I forgot to mention this steel that I'm using is actually called music wire or piano wire. It's uh, often used for landing craft on radio-controlled uh, aircraft. You can't get them at the big box store. You need to get it at a specialty uh, hobby store that will sell uh, remote control. Uh, you might find it in a, in a 
in a high-end uh, hardware store if you're lucky. But otherwise, go on my Amazon uh, shop. The link will be uh, in the description, and you can find find this uh, this there. Uh, I like to mark the, the tip about one inch to one and a quarter for the taper, make it a little easier for me to guide it. You can sharpen it on a belt sander or your grinder, as shown in the, the, the pictures here. Uh, I prefer a belt sander. Uh, the oscillating sander tends to swirl, so you're going to have to be real careful with that. Remember, this is not high-speed steel, although it's tool steel. It will blue, and you'll lose the uh, temper, so be uh, quench it uh, frequently. Okay, I finished grinding the shaft. Uh, I used a little 500 grit and uh, polished off some of the oxide. Remember, if you use any sandpaper for polishing any of the steel or the or the ferrule, don't use it on wood. It'll transfer oxides. Before you give this to somebody, put it in your toolbox. Put it a put a little wine cork on it to to protect it. I got a link here to a short video on on the birdcage all grind, which you ought to check out because it's it is the best way to to best tip for for it all. You know the drill. Uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I welcome your comments. Y'all come on back here.